We serve an awesome God. We serve a powerful God. A God who's above all others. There's nothing too hard for him. For he is great. And he is wonderful. He is mighty. He is holy. And we worship him today. We worship you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We open up our mouth and give you the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips. We honor you with our praise today. We honor you with our words today. We honor you with our lips today. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Jesus. 
yet, sir? Yes. 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 Let the sick say, hey. I, am I am healed. Because of what hey. the Lord has done yes. for us. Hallelujah. Of the Lord Hallelujah. in the sanctuary of our God. We give you thanks. 
gathered on this morning to say thank you. Come on, just out of the depths of your gratitude for the life that God has given, for the ways that God has made, for who he is, we say, come on, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your way. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your word. And we say, come on, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The blessing of the Lord be upon you this morning. As you continue to stand, I want you to, t- to be deliberate and intentional to share with somebody you do not know, have not seen. Introduce yourself if you do not know them. Give them the greeting of the first century church. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Come on, get out of those pews, out of those aisles and share with one another. The peace of God, the grace of God, the love of God be yours today. Hallelujah. 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 God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible that only He will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible that only He will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible that only He will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. 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 God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. what God is doing. Hallelujah. 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 In you. In you. Hallelujah. 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 May be seated in the presence of our God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Good morning and welcome to Greater Communities Morning Manor. If you are a first time guest, we are delighted to have you as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
We are a church that is committed to creating an atmosphere where every man, woman, boy, and girl will have repeated opportunities to hear, see, and feel, and touch the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We are passionate Pentecostals. Ain't nobody talking to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are tongue-talking, foot-stomping, hand-clapping. Church of God in Christ. The blessing of the Lord be upon you this morning. It is so good. I am so glad to see so many of you. And I bless the Lord for what the Lord has been doing in our lives collectively. I celebrate what God is doing in your life. How many of you can celebrate that God is good? And he's working. Come on. He's working in me. Will you take a moment and just tell somebody that God is great and he's great in you too? Yeah, he's great. He's great. And he's great in you too. The praise and the blessing of God. We thank the Lord that there was no loss of life in this congregation during the storm. Hallelujah. Folk were delayed, but they weren't denied. Ain't nobody talking to me. Folk got stuck, but they got out. Come on, look at somebody and say, I can weather a storm. Woo, and if I can do this, ha, I can do that. Don't, don't y'all play with me today. If I can do this, I can do that. Hallelujah. If God can keep me like that, then God can keep me in this. Hallelujah. Hee. It could have been, it should have been, but it wasn't. Hallelujah. And to the glory of God, we thank the Lord for his goodness and his grace. I'm excited about the things that God is doing in our lives. We've come to this first Sunday of the month where we will share in a time of communion. It is the sacrament of the church that we, we ascribe to. Our church practices uh, the sacraments of the church of holy communion feet washing and water baptism just kept hearing that in my morning devotion today that i'm i'm a passionate pentecostal ain't nobody talking to me i'm passionate about the baptism in the holy spirit i'm passionate about what god is doing in the life of the church amen i'm not talking about four walls and i ain't talking about a congregation i'm talking about the body of christ god is doing some amazing things in the people of God. And I just want our, I want our assembly to be one that celebrates the goodness of God. That's really happy that you're saved. I grew up and we used to sing the song, If You're Happy and You Know It. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, right? But, but if you're saved and you know it, come on. If you say, I mean, you know you show sure enough. Heaven bound. Hallelujah. I keep trying. I'm going to get us there. I'm going to keep working on it. But I don't believe that you need to shout harder over your car, over your job, over your healing than you do over your salvation. Until we get back to thanking God for saving us. And move out of this world culture of prosperity and materialism and the things that God does for us as individuals. Instead of thanking God that he sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross. And in his death, we now have eternal life. Hallelujah. That's worth shouting on. That's worth, the, that's just worth the price of admission. Ain't nobody talking to me. I'm saved. I'm saved. By his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. For I'm saved, saved, saved. Elder Reed said one more time. I said by his power divine, said to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Means 
something. Hallelujah. 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 I'm saved. Sanctified. Baptized in water and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Shatababa Sando Rianda de Sheto Glory Woo Hallelujah Hallelujah mm. Thank you Jesus we got to move on because I got to let y'all go. Hallelujah. But don't you know there's times you just want to be in the presence of God and just worship him because he's God. Hallelujah. This is his church and we want him to have his way. Hallelujah. That's the great thing about being passionately Pentecostal. The spirit of the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. We worship your name. We bless you, O oh God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord. Woo! The name of the Lord. El Elohim, El Shaddai, Hayalaba Shanda de de Seca. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Reason I live this life, I don't want to be lost. Reason I live this life, I don't want to be lost. Reason I live this life. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost when Jesus comes. Woo! Ha! Reason I live this life. I don't want to be lost. Oh, the reason I live this life. I don't want to be lost. Reason I live this life. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost when Jesus comes. Oh! reason I pray my prayer I don't want to be lost oh, the reason I pray my prayer I don't want to be lost the reason I pray my prayer I don't want to be lost I don't want to be lost when Jesus comes oh the reason I live this life I don't want to be lost oh, the reason I live this life I don't want to be lost. Reason I live this life. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. 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 Don't push me, y'all, because we can just worship all day. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. We bless the Lord that through the storm, through the ice, through the snow, through sickness, the Lord has been faithful. Hallelujah. He has been, come on, faithful. He is faithful, that promise. want to share with you that um, last night as we... Um, came in from uh, California. Um, we went directly to the hospital to see our church mother uh, who was in the emergency room, Mother Nelson, and she has subsequently been um, admitted. Uh, the blessing of the Lord is upon her life. Mother was smiling and talking, and she is uh, doing well. Her son Jimmy's here. I'm going to ask him to come and just give us an update on mom. And um, he threatened me to go home and get some rest. And said, I'm going to be an 8 o'clock pastor. You better be there. I'm, I'm trying to figure out when. I mean, you know you're older than I am. But when did you become my daddy? That's all I'm trying to figure out. to the saints. Um, mom's doing pretty good. She's got a little congestive heart failure. Um, we're hoping that she'll be out maybe Monday. 
they have given her drug to relieve the uh, fluid that's around her heart. Um, she's been short, short of breath since she had a pacemaker when she was speaking here in September. And um, she's been hard-headed, so um, I actually had to threaten her along with the pastor for her to go to the doctor. So we got her there, and hopefully they'll be able to do, and with God's help, cure her from her problem. All right. Uh, continue prayers for her, please. While we were in Haiti, Mother Owens um, had a, a, a medical challenge, and she is doing well. She is home, and we continue to pray for her. We bless the Lord for what God is doing. Let's pray. Father, we lift up Mother Nelson. You don't have to go. You're already there. Stretch out your hand. Lord, whatever this is, if she can have it, you can heal it. So we pray now for your divine, sovereign intervention. Lord, we're not praying out of our flesh, out of our emotions. We're just praying by faith, trusting and believing you for what you said. And Lord, we've laid hands on her last night and we touched and agreed. So now manifest that prayer in the name of Jesus. We lift up Mother Owens and we lift up Mother Peoples and we lift up, Lord, people that are currently under treatment or doctor's orders. Father, we just believe you for healing. Healing for your people. Ah, shut up. Healing in the body. We trust you that thou art a healer. You're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. So heal now from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. If there are persons today, Lord, who are sick in their body, we pray divine deliverance and healing in Jesus' name. And we thank you now. Amen and amen. The blessing of the Lord be upon you to this morning, beloved. We're going to receive communion. Uh, we are going to, uh, as a church, officially uh, break our fast. But let me just share with you in this break fast that, um, and uh, if I don't get to preaching, take this as the sermon. Um, if a time of fasting and praying has been beneficial for you, in a month of January. And I'm not talking about a weight loss program. But I'm talking about in spiritual warfare, there's some stuff that has been revealed to you about you. If you've been walking this consecration out, there is no way you can tell me you've been reading God's word, praying, and God didn't show you, you. That he didn't reveal, here's an area that you need that needs treatment. Now, I want, I want to show you something. And, and again, constitute this as the sermon. I, I meant to, I had something else prepared, but I'll blend both of them at 11. But watch this. If you look at the life of Israel, every time Israel sat down to eat, they rose up to play. Just go and look at their lives. Look at every time... They sat in some type of festival, some time, some, some kind of uh, off the beaten path from what God had ordered them just in their diet. Then they went and did something else. When I anoint you today, it is that God will break, that God will strengthen you to continue in what you've begun. And that he will break strongholds that you have identified. Toe holes that became a stronghold. Ephesians 4, 26. Neither give any what? Place to the devil. Place in the thought life. Place, and we're going to talk about that. Because this is really not about flesh and blood. But we battle against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. But watch this. It comes from thoughts, ideas, and concepts that have permeated the way the world thinks. And so the world thinking, this, the, this, this secular morality has had influence on Christian spirituality. To the point that the church is not framing ideas anymore for the world. The world has created a culture that the church has got to deal with. That's the spiritual warfare. 
It's not about personalities. And watch this. If we are so immature in the word of God that we think that my fight is with Elder Reed, then I'm emotionally immature and spiritually inept. My, my fight is really against the government. Ain't nobody talking to me. And lawmakers who are making liberal laws that are moving us away from our Judeo-Christian foundation. Ain't nobody talking to me. My, my, my spiritual warfare is against, the, is against the media, the entertainment industry. That would suggest that Beyonce is more influential than Jesus. See, see, the enemy has caused us to look at one another and wage war on each other so that he will continue to lay out a cultural agenda that suggests that it, that's so relativistic, big word, that means it's subjective, that whatever I think it is, it's that. That would, that would say to us that it's okay for same-sex marriage and, and homosexuality and lesbianism. Watch this. Bestiality. And watch this. Cloning. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's just anti-God. Even though we have the ability to do it, it has taken us further away from God. It, my spiritual warfare is against a culture. It's against a social-political system. Ain't nobody talking to me. And then it's against a moral system that it says anything and everything is okay. That's our spiritual warfare. That makes the distinction that holiness is the mark on the people of God that distinguishes them from the sameness in the world. So why be holy? Because it is what God has stamped upon us. And watch this, our culture, our children are being raised in a mainstream of thinking. They said, that's what they're doing, but you know, that's not me. But, and I want to, I want to go back to one thing. I want to celebrate that 97% of men in America are heterosexual. They're not homosexual. So why do we keep spending so much time on 3%? Ain't even worth my discussion. Ain't nobody talking to me. Talking about spiritual warfare. I'm not talking about your personality, your attitude. I'm saying that we've got a war against the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that doesn't mean that that means high offices, but that also means in the heavenlies. Oh, come on, y'all. In the heavenlies. Instead of us praying against me praying against Jimmy and Jimmy praying against me, we both need to be praying against the spirit that's hovering over Atlanta, the regional demon, the territorial despot that sits in the atmosphere, ain't nobody talking to me, that, that promotes human trafficking. Human slave trading and drug trading and, 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 and all types of debauchery, right? Bondage. We need to war. We need to begin to pray outside of our family and outside of my financial crisis and begin to attack the kingdom of that world. I'm sorry, mothers. Why don't y'all just have a seat and I'll be right with you. I didn't know they were standing. I'm trying to get us to, to go someplace. So when we break the fast, watch this. If you have been given, if you've given up a dietary thing, if you stop eating after seven, if you followed the fast guidelines and, and you are being, and you've grown and you are growing spiritually, why would you stop that? If it's working, why walk away from it? Israel did that. Israel came to the feast and they did solemn assembly so much that God got sick of it. Oh, come on, y'all. Bible readers. God got sick of it and said, I'm tired of your fast. He said, I'm tired of your, your, your convocations. I'm tired of your solemn assemblies. You come and you do all of this stuff. And he says, but then when it's over, it's an event. It's not a lifestyle. I want to encourage this modern church, and I keep using this word modern because part of my reading is the fact that we, we're, we're, we're post-Christian, we're post-modernity, but, but we're, we're modern to the point 
that the distinction of being connected with God is not as loyal as the generations that preceded us. Simply because, watch this, we are dealing, we are builders and boomers trying to minister to millenniums. So we're trying to get a generation with a set of values that they don't share our values. If you were born between 1945 and 1964, you are a baby boomer. If you're born between 63 and 85, you're a Generation X. Then there's Generation Y and Z, when Y and Z are called millennials. So that group doesn't have the same allegiance to life. They don't even understand. They don't even process like boomers. So boomers are going to try to make millennials to be boomers, and it will never happen. Because they, they see, they don't understand. They have no real clear appreciation for titles or authority. They want to see demonstration. Show me that it works and I'll follow it. Can I talk to some young people? If I'm saying amen, well, the young folks just please raise your hand. Parents, don't kill them. Never mind. I, I'll talk to you on your own sessions. But I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you. That, well, how come our kids aren't following our tradition? How come they ain't saying yes, Lord? How come they ain't at the altar? Because they do not have that understanding. Baby boomers and builders, the generation that came before the boomers, they have a sense of loyalty. They respect, they have duty. It's my duty to come to church. If pastors say it, then that's what it is. Generation X, Y, Z, pastor can say it all he wants. And if it don't connect with me, if I don't process it the right way, if I don't feel it, then I'm not doing it. Oh, ain't nobody talking to me. So when you talk about, talk about spiritual warfare, for parents, our spiritual warfare is that our children would have a genuine relationship with God, that the Holy Spirit would fill them, infuse them, and that God would keep them so that the culture of the world will not sweep them away from what we fundamentally believe. That's where our spiritual warfare is. Am I preaching? That's why, that's why Paul says in chapter, in Ephesians chapter 5, and let me tell you why we're studying uh, Galatians this month. It's critically important. I ain't crazy. I knew that if we did Ephesians first, we have to follow up with Galatians. Because Ephesians tells us who we are in him. Now Galatians is going to show us the fight that we have in us. The fight between the flesh and the spirit. Come on here. And there is a fight. Because we want to have our own way. Oh, my God. How much time do you spend in prayer about asking God to deliver you from you? Deliver you from your own opinion. Deliver you from your own ways. Deliver you from you. Stop praying for everybody else and spend some time praying for you. Are you with me? So spiritual warfare is about what's happening in the heavens. There are demon spirits. And there's a real devil, y'all. We, we, we talk about God a lot, but you, you need to understand that there is a real demon. There's a real devil with demons all over the world. Now, watch this. He does not have creative power, but he is an imitator. Jesus says, I saw him imitating that he transformed himself, what's that, into an angel of light. Come on, y'all. So what's our, what's our prayer? Our prayer is that God will give us spiritual understanding and watch this, and discernment. Can I tell you something? If you, if you let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost, discernment comes with the package. Ain't nobody talking to me. It comes with the package. It's, it's part of the package. It's not an upgrade. It's standard. <laughs> Come on, discernment ain't no upgrade. It's standard. That's why all the deep people really, I just stay away from y'all. Because you, you, if you got the Holy Ghost, you have all of the gifts of the Spirit. Whether, they, whether you're using them or not, they're there. So it ain't like you deeper and you got the gift of healing. No, that's standard. That comes with the package. You just happen to use that more than you use discernment. 
Oh, now they messed up somebody's mysticism. Ooh, you know, stay so deep. No, they just exercise that gift. Come on, touch somebody and say, exercise your gift. It's in there. The working of miracles is already in you. The working of faith is already in you. The gift of tongues is already in you because it comes standard with the Holy Ghost package. Oh, I know I'm teaching right. So watch this. So I, for you, and particularly if you are new in faith, and um, if you're new to this church, I'm going to ask you to extend your fast. Now let me listen to me. Listen to me. So ain't going to be a whole lot of hooping. I'm going to ask you to extend your fast. If you know this journey has been working, then please don't go back to your old self. Peter says that, um, what is it? The, the sow has returned her, her wallowing and the dog to its own vomit. We were in Haiti and um, when we landed, taking us, take me to the hotel. And all this amazing poverty was around me. The thing that got me, we turned the corner and there was a black pig and a dog eating out of a garbage heap. And immediately, that scripture came to me. Going, we were driving, going someplace else. We were, we were holding off our dear life everywhere we no, I mean everywhere we went. I, I've never experienced anything like that in my life, where there are no rules to driving. It's like a nation of bumper cars. They take a two-lane highway and make it four lanes. Tractor trailers, people walking, darting in and out of traffic, motorcycles on both sides, and everybody drives fast. But they don't run into each other. They have a horn and they have brakes and they have untreated roads. So you will pop your head against the top of the roof. And then, you know, poor uh, Robin, she just decided to start turning sideways because you can't look out because you see your life in front of your eyes because here comes a truck and you're about to die. I don't know if y'all saw my Facebook post, but um, we were caught in a protest and the, the police were shooting. And the driver decides just to stop and back up in mid-traffic. Everybody's coming this way. Folks are running that way. We have cars behind us. He just stopped and decided to back up. It's like, get us out of here. And it was amazing. But I, I, I share that to say, the pig and the dog got me. I came back and I saw the pig, the dog, and the goat eating out of, come on, the garbage. If you go back to where you were before you started this consecration, then you're the pig, the dog, and the goat going back to the garbage and expecting God to do something great in you. If this is the year of double-double, and I know it is, this is the year of, of, of double favor, this is the year of double capacity, then it's going to require, watch this, you creating room for God to be great in you. And you cannot go back to where you came from. Your attitude, come on here, your conversation, your conduct, you, you can't do that. Otherwise, we're like Israel that sits down and eats and rose up to play. This is just some solid teaching. So watch this. I'm asking you, particularly if you're new to this church, you, you just joined and I want you to follow. I want you to follow me as I follow Christ. And I want you to extend your fast. Now, this is what I'm not asking you to do. I'm not asking you to extend your fast the way the fast has been laid out in the Daniel fast. If you want to do that, I encourage you to, that that's healthy. That will continue to cause you to grow. But I am asking you on Tuesdays and Fridays, just two days, 
If you will fast either absolute, that means no, that means nothing until three o'clock or after, right? Or if you will use the Daniel fast guideline on Tuesdays and Fridays, but that you put into your schedule that I'm committing my fasting time. I'm denying myself. I'm listening to God, shutting it off, locking people out, because I don't want to lose this fellowship that I have with God. And if you're available on noon, then we will be in prayer here on Tuesdays and Fridays. Noonday prayer, Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm asking you, let's walk this thing out. And, and the reason why I'm saying is because you need to. Now, you're grown. You can do what you want. And, that, and watch this. And you can do what you want comes from that generation X, Y, and Z, the millennials. It, it comes from that. That's the spirit that's in the world. And, it's, and so if it's in the world, it's definitely in the church where there is no real submission to spiritual authority. Because there's no, there's no submission to governmental authority. Think it. We are living in an anti-authority culture where nothing means nothing. But that's why the church has got to be different. On Tuesdays and Fridays, I've got to let you go. On Tuesdays and Fridays, either you fast what's called an absolute. Now, absolute fast may not work for everybody. Because if you're on medication, if you're diabetic and you... You have to cover your insulin. I want you to do that, but you can fast, right? And particularly, if you don't have none of them health issues, then you need to try an absolute. Just keep some breath mints and breath strips with you. No, I'm, I'm not being funny. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. So you, you know, and listen, and don't tell nobody you're fasting. Don't go to work looking all poor and, you know, down and, oh, Lord. Don't do that. Wash your face, anoint yourself, and, and, and give that time to God. I want you to do that, all right? This week, to, beginning tomorrow at 7 a.m., we will be back in our prayer call. And so the prayer call will continue, but it will only go Monday through Friday for the first week of every month. We're not going to do it every day. For the first week of every month, if you need information on the prayer call, it will be on your bulletin. And uh, just ask somebody, and we will get that to you. 7 a.m. to 7.15. And uh, again, the faith focus is going to be given to you. There's a lot of information I'm trying to give you today. Faith Focus is going to be given to you so that you can begin reading the, um, the epistle to the church at Galatia. Amen? I want to pray for you. I want to anoint you, and we're going to give you communion. And then we are going to receive our offering, and then we are going to break. I want to share with you that it is critical that you don't revert back to where you were. Because watch this, if you release this discipline of fasting and praying and reading, then you are going, you're setting yourself up for the enemy to lead you away from God. And so you, you have to take this. So it ain't always about jumping and shouting. Amen? But it is about making sure that you understand the word of God. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Let's begin. So our Father and our God, we come to break fast. And Lord, we come to be anointed. You said that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And if they've committed any sin, they would be forgiven. Father, as we come to 
break fast. We receive your anointing that will strengthen us, empower us, that will heal us, and that will seal us. We pray that as we anoint the saints this morning, that the work that you've begun in them, God, you will accelerate and you will complete it. We pray, God, for the healing of their body. We pray, God, for the regeneration of their spirit. We pray that your word, God, will be amplified in their life. Forgive us of our sin, blot out our transgression, purge us of our iniquity, and wash us in your blood. And fill us with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's our privilege, it's our right, and it's our guarantee. So we pray that you fill every unfilled vessel. And then refill every filled vessel. We pray in Jesus' name. And we thank you now. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask that you would stand, face the center aisle. Follow the direction of the ushers. After you've been anointed, you can receive communion, take a unit, and return to your seats. And then we will share in communion together. Father, we thank you, and we bless you now. on the left hand side then stay on the left if you're coming from the right stay on the right thank you for me just for me just for me Jesus came came and did it just for me.
The same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and said, this is my body broken for you. As we do ministering in his name, let us dine. In the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, which is the New Testament. For oft as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Let us die. going to ask that you would pass the receptacles to the person on the on the end of your pew nearest the center aisle as the ushers shall come and receive them after you have After you've dispensed of your receptacle, you'll be seated. I'm going to ask that you just give our ushers just a moment to give you offering envelopes for your tithe and your offering. As we come to the Lord today to say to God, we bless you. How many of you experienced the presence of the Lord in this service? I want you to know that God is great. Thank you, Father. To our first time visitors, we're delighted that you are with us. And if you are visiting us for the first time in Morning Manor, will you stand just so that we can just share and say hello? If you're here, the blessing of the Lord be upon this family. Come on, greater community, give them a great God bless you. We're delighted to have you. Could you just introduce yourself, sir? You're from Stone Mountain. Oh, you go to, okay, wonderful. And this is your first time here. We're delighted to have you, sir. 
We're delighted to have the entire family. Thank you for being with us. You may be seated in his presence. What's your name? Pardon me? Brianna, we're delighted to have you with us. Will you give her a great God bless you? If you have an offering envelope, we're going to ask that you begin to fill that out. If you need one, the ushers are on the floor. Our guests are under no obligation to give, but we will receive your gift if you choose to worship with us in this act of worship, and we will apply it to the area of our greatest need. We bless the Lord for you. Sister, uh, Evangelist Carolyn Davis is looking for an envelope, and I want to make sure she gets one. Amen. <laughs> we're delighted to have her back home. Amen. Come on, give her a great... I love the flag ministry this morning. That may be new to some of you, but that is just a wonderful expression of the glory of God. And it paints an emotional picture of worship. And every color means something. And that, that's kind of the way Israel worshiped. They knew how to go to war based on what flag was posted. They knew how to pray. But come on, I'm just trying to help you with it. So that when you see it, you'll know that this is not just somebody standing and waving a flag, but this is, represents the glory of the Lord. It represents the pageantry of our God. And it adds a flavor to our worship. And we bless the Lord for you. I also want to share with you that this month, um, Bishop Harper has uh, appointed me as the jurisdictional coordinator for the urban initiatives of South Central Georgia. Urban Initiatives is the national program for the Church of God in Christ uh, implemented by Bishop Blake where five major programs will, are going to be implemented throughout the 12,000 congregations of the Church of God in Christ. It is, um, it is a wonderful honor. Bishop is, is, is really excited. If you are a person that um, has a heart for community service, that you have resources and that you can help, I'm going to ask that you, as part of our local church, would register for this conference. It starts on the 19th, and it goes through the 21st. And uh, we're going to have uh, Bishop Harper will be here. We're going to have people uh, making presentations on the Affordable Care Act. We have a bank that has come to, uh, to the table to help co-sponsor uh, this event. We're, um, we're, we're going to go to ITC. Uh, we've got national leaders coming in from all over the country. And uh, we pray that we will have your support as well. Amen? Now, let me just tell you how this works. When you're, when you're appointed, you've got to make it happen. And you can't make it happen without the support of your local church. Oh, anybody here besides me? That's why I stayed out of all the jurisdictional stuff for two years, because I know how this works. But this is something that's really on his heart that he really wants to happen. And, uh, and this is one of my strong suits. So you can't, you can't say that you come to work and then you don't work. Amen? And so if you're interested, if you have a heart for uh, community development, there's going to be so many wonderful presentations about financial literacy, education, economic development, family preservation, uh, um, family preservation, crime reduction. I'm just kind of getting a brain fog here. And financial literacy. I want you to be a part of that. We're going to have a great discussion on uh, Pentecostalism. Chuck, I'm sorry, John MacArthur wrote a book called Strange Fire. John MacArthur wrote a book on Strange Fire that just literally um, has taken off on charismatics and Pentecostals. He says, we got the wrong doctrine, we're following the wrong leadership, and uh, he just went off. And so we're going to gather a bunch of minds together at ITC, and we're going to put together a Pentecostal apologetic. Now, this is the theologian in me. We're going to put together a response to John MacArthur's assail on the Pentecostal church because you just can't talk about us and not know us right. now and, and don't judge us because there's been now you know there's been some charlatans but everybody in the church ain't crooked yeah. Yeah. amen come on and so we're, we're going to we're going to do that if you're interested in getting some more information we, I really want you to give us a call we're going to try to probably um, gather with people today after the 11 o'clock service just to kind of share to make sure you know this. The registration forms are available. There, if, you, if you need a registration form, I want you to make sure that we put one in your hand. And, so, and it's also online. I want to uh, share that um, the prayer call I talked about that. There was my notes. Where are my notes?
extended the fast, our evangelism effort, prayer call, urban initiatives, Mother Nelson, Mother Owens, Atlanta Storm. And then you have the announcements. This coming Saturday, we're going to have a get, uh, the business professional woman, women are sponsoring the Getting Out of Debt workshop. We want you to be a part of that. And then our Ignite Youth Ministry, uh, ages 10 and up, uh, will join us for the Winter Jam. It's a multicultural Christian concert on February 8th. That's this Saturday. Where you're also re uh, requested to be a part of the vow renewal service for the marriage ministry on the 15th. Please read your announcements. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Also, we're going to gear up for our Black History program. There's so many things happening this month. And I want you, if you are new to this church and you have not been baptized, we need you to sign up for your water baptism classes. We just don't want to put you in the water. We want you to know why you're being baptized. Amen? And so that, that sign up is available today. We want you to do that. I'm really asking for your support on the Urban Initiatives Conference, particularly you professionals and you that have, um, have the ability, because the other thing I'm responsible for is putting together a jurisdictional staff. And clearly I want to do that with the base of my own church. you got to have some people that know you. Amen. That know you crazy. Amen. Did not just think you crazy, but know you crazy and love you anyway. Amen. And so we're going to ask you to do that. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Have we received the offering? Oh, well, let's go. I'm a little off. I've been in time zones. I'm a little off. I want to tell you that every place we've gone this month from New York City to Milwaukee, to Dallas, to Haiti, to California, people are talking about, in a very good way, greater community, Church of God in Christ. So this just, you are wonderful people, you are blessed people, and we want to continue the glory of God. Will you stand to your feet, face the outer wall, and this will conclude our service and our time of worship. To you that are watching us over Ustream, we bless the Lord for you. And we would ask that you would come and be a part of our service. You can make it at 11 a.m. We'll be delighted to share with you. And then be with us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. This is the place where the glory of God is falling like rain. We'll see you on our next telecast. Come follow the direction of the ushers. Bring the Lord in offering. In the name of the Lord, it is a strong time.